Once I was summoned to the judgment seat of God. I stood alone before the Lord Jesus, appeared such as we know him during his passion. After a moment, his wounds disappeared, except for five, those in his hands, his feet, and his side. Suddenly, I saw the complete condition of my soul as God sees it. I could clearly see all that is displeasing to God. I did not know that even the smallest transgressions will have to be accounted for. What a moment! Who can describe it? To stand before the thrice holy God, Jesus asked me, Who are you? I answered, I am your servant, Lord. You are guilty of one day of fire and purgatory. I wanted to throw myself immediately into the flames of purgatory, but Jesus stopped me and said, Which do you prefer, suffer now for one day in purgatory or for a short while on earth? I replied, Jesus, I want to suffer in purgatory, and I want to suffer also the greatest pains on earth, even if it were until the end of the world. Jesus said, One is enough. You will go back to earth, and there you will suffer much, but not for long. You will accomplish my will and my desires, and a faithful servant of mine will help you to do this. Now, rest your head on my bosom, on my heart, and draw from its strength and power for these sufferings, because you will find neither relief nor help, nor comfort anywhere else. Know that you will have much, much to suffer, but don't let this frighten you. I am with you. Soon afterwards, I became ill. Physical weakness was for me a school of patience. Only Jesus knows how many efforts of will I had to make to fulfill my duty. In order to purify a soul, Jesus uses whatever instruments he likes. My soul underwent a complete abandonment on the part of creatures. Often my best intentions were misinterpreted by the sisters. A type of suffering which is most painful, but God allows it. And we must accept it because in its way we become more like Jesus. There was one thing which I could not understand for a long time. Jesus ordered me to tell everything to my superiors, but my superiors did not believe what I said and treated me with pity as though I was being deluded or were imagining things. Because of this, believing myself to be deluded, I resolved to avoid God interiorly for fear of these illusions. But the grace of God pursued me at every step, and God spoke to me when I least expected it. One day, Jesus told me that he would cause a chastisement to fall upon the most beautiful city in our country. This chastisement would be that which God had punished Sodom and Gomorrah. I saw the great wrath of God and a shudder pierced my heart. I prayed in silence. After a moment, Jesus said to me, My child, unite yourself closely to me during the sacrifice and offer my blood and my wounds to my father in expiation for the sins of that city. Repeat this without interruption throughout the entire Holy Mass. Do this for seven days. On the seventh day, I saw Jesus in a bright cloud and began to beg him to look upon the city and upon our whole country. Jesus looked down graciously. When I saw the kindness of Jesus, I began to beg his blessing. Immediately, Jesus said, For your sake, I bless the entire country. And he made a big sign of the cross over our country. Seeing the goodness of God, a great joy filled my soul. The year 1929. Once during Holy Mass, I felt in a very special way the closeness of God, although I tried to turn away and escape from Him. On several occasions, I have run away from God, because I did not want to be a victim of the evil spirits, since others have told me more than once that such is the case. And this incertitude lasted for quite some time. During Holy Mass, before Communion, we had the renewal of vows. When we had left our kneelers and had started to recite the formula for the vows, Jesus appeared suddenly at my side, clad in a white garment with a golden girdle around his waist. And he said to me, I give you eternal love, that your purity may be untarnished, and as a sign that you will never be subject to temptations against purity. Jesus took off his golden cincture and tied it around my waist. 
Since then, I have never experienced any attacks against this virtue, either in my heart or in my mind. I later understood that this was one of the greatest graces which the Most Holy Virgin Mary had obtained for me, as for many years I had been asking this grace of her. Since that time, I have experienced increasing devotion to the Mother of God. She has taught me how to love God interiorly, and also how to carry out His holy will in all things. O oh Mary, you are joy, because through you God descended to earth and into my heart. On one occasion, I saw a servant of God in the immediate danger of committing a mortal sin. I started to beg God to deign to send down upon me all the torments of hell and all the sufferings he wished, if only this priest would be set free and snatched from the occasion of committing a sin. Jesus heard my prayer, and that very instant I felt a crown of thorns on my head. The thorns penetrated my head with great force right into my brain. This lasted for three hours. The servant of God was set free from this sin, and his soul was strengthened by a special grace of God. Once on Christmas Day, 1928, I felt the omnipotence and the presence of God surrounding me. And once more I fled from the interior meeting with the Lord. I asked Mother Superior for permission to go to Josephinic to visit the sisters there. The Superior gave us permission and we started to get ready at right after lunch. The other sisters were already waiting for me at the door of the convent while I ran to my cell to get my cloak. On my way back, as I was passing close to the little chapel, I saw Jesus standing in the doorway. He said to me, Go ahead, but I am taking your heart. Suddenly I felt that I had no heart in my chest, but the sisters were scolding me for lingering behind saying that it was already getting late, so I quickly went along with them. But a sense of uneasiness troubled me, and a strange longing invaded my soul, through, through no one knew what was happening except God. After we had been at Joseph Finnick for only a few minutes, I said to the sisters, let's go back home. The sisters asked for at least a moment's rest, but my spirit could find no peace. I explained that we must return before dark, and in as much as we had quite a distance to go, we immediately returned home. When Mother Superior met us in the hallway, she asked, Have the sisters gone yet, or have they already returned? I said that we had already returned because I did not want to be returning in the evening. I took off my cloak and immediately went to a little chapel. As soon as I entered, Jesus said to me, Go to Mother Superior and tell her that you came back, not in order to reach home before dark, but because I had taken your heart. Even though this was very difficult for me, I went to the superior and I told her frankly the real reason why I had come back so soon, and I asked pardon of the Lord for everything that had displeased him. And Jesus filled me with great joy. I understood that apart from God, there is no contentment anywhere. On one occasion, I saw two sisters who were about to enter hell. A terrible agony tore my soul. I prayed to God for them, and Jesus said to me, Go to Mother Superior and tell her that those two sisters are in danger of committing a mortal sin. The next day I told this to Superior. One of them had already repented with great fervor, and the other was going through a great struggle. One day Jesus said to me, I am going to leave this house, because there are things there here which displeases me. And the host came out of the tabernacle and came to rest in my hands, and I with joy placed it back in the tabernacle. This was repeated a second time, and I did the same thing. Despite this, it happened a third time, but the host was transformed to the living Lord Jesus, who said to me, I will stay here no longer. At this, a powerful love for Jesus rose up in my soul. I answered, and I, I will not let you leave this house, Jesus. And again Jesus disappeared while the host remained in my hands. Once again I put it back in a chalice and closed it up in the tabernacle. And Jesus stayed with us. I undertook to make three days of, ador of adoration by way of reparation. Once Jesus said to me, Tell Mother General that in this house such and such a thing is being committed, which displeases me and offends me greatly. I did not tell this to Mother right away. But the uneasiness which the Lord made me feel did not permit to wait a minute longer, 
and I wrote immediately to Mother General, and peace returned to my soul. I often felt the passion of the Lord Jesus in my body, although this was imperceptible to others, and I rejoiced in it because Jesus wanted it so. But this lasted for only a short time. These sufferings set my soul afire with love for God and for immortal souls. Love endures everything. Love is stronger than death. Love fears nothing.